So today we're talking about crypto jacking. And it's this kind of new attack that's emerged in the past year or so. Can't even talk about it without talking about Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin and associated cryptocurrencies have brought a lot of greed to the kind of the underworld of the internet, so to speak. But uh, crypto jacking is basically where attacker places crypto mining code on servers or laptops or whatever to start mining cryptocurrency. And attackers like this because it's different from ransomware. Ransomware, it, they have to basically depend upon the company to paying the ransom. But once they get their crypto mining code on their computer, they don't have to wait. It just starts working immediately. So that's why it's starting to outpace on the ransomware stuff that we've seen. And a lot of people don't know, but uh, a, a lot of people seem to think that it's confined to just like the armies of Windows boxes that are sitting in large enterprises. And that's, that's not the case. That's only one uh, vector of attack. There's actually three distinct ones that we uh, identify. One is the kind of server base. So tax servers. Then the other one is the end using computers, so like laptops and so forth. And then the third one is just through the web. So we can talk about uh, web, but here in a second. So if you run a help desk, uh, IT shop and you start getting a lot of complaints about computers being slow, this might be something you want to might look at. Similarly, if you get a lot of complaints about your website being slow, you might have crypto jacking code on there as well. And uh, to kind of dive into that, crypto jacking on websites is actually such a big concern now that there's actually coin blocking lists to block known bad JavaScript code from being executed on websites. This works the exact same way like all the ad blocking software out there. One of the more notorious forms of uh, mining out there uses a site called CoinHive. So CoinHive uses a cryptocurrency called Monero. Attackers like it because it's uh, less easier to kind of trace it back to where it's going, although it does use CoinHive, so maybe talk to them. And the reason the JavaScript stuff is so dangerous is, is because, you know, every website out there nowadays uses JavaScript. They can't escape it. It's, it's a part of modern day web development. And if you look at JavaScript development trends, it's very, very common for JavaScript developers to include a lot of different third-party software. So you might have one library that calls another library that calls another library that ends up including crypto mining code into it. So that's, that's what makes it more dangerous. And at first blush, some people are like, JavaScript, you know, I thought crypto was mining on GPUs. And the, the difference here is, is that when you include JavaScript on a really popular website, maybe it gets 100,000 visits, maybe it's millions of visits a day, you have to realize that that's not actually mining on that website, it's mining on all the end users coming to that website. So all those millions of users are now mining crypto for that attacker. That's the dangerous part. Now let's go back to servers. So earlier this year, over $200,000 of Monero was mined on WebLogic servers. So WebLogic is a popular server out there uh, by Oracle. And it's, once again, another older piece of software. And basically this exploit, it's, it's almost hard to call it an exploit, but this exploit consisted of sending a uh, request to the server. And uh, the request was a SOAP request. So this is an older type of uh, request that was sent. It's similar into uh, to like a REST style, but if you talk to other software shops around here in Soma, even REST is kind of considered older. And so the SOAP message consisted of calling out to this uh, class called java.lang.processbuilder. And so the engineers watching this video are already chuckling to themselves because in effect, this is creating another program to run on this computer. And it was past an argument slash bin slash 
SH. And so this, in effect, launches a shell from which the attacker can basically run whatever the hell he wants at that point. This is completely disgusting. This should not be happening in 2018, but it still is. Next up, we have Drupal. So a couple months ago, there was this event called Drupal Geddon, much like Ermageddon. And to kind of give you the particulars of what happened here, um, Drupal is a popular PHP-based CMS. It's used by the military, it's used by financial institutions, health institutions. It's reported that over a million different websites run this framework. And there was a bug in the way um, the form builder code was sanitizing input. This bug allowed people, once again, to launch one tiny HTTP request against the website, and it allowed them to pop a shell. Here's the deal. This is a fact of life. Software developers create bugs. It happens. It's part of the process. But what's not a part of the process and what, what we should be looking at is how we actually provision the software. We don't have to make it so easy for attackers to launch shells and to start uh, running their other code. And the reason I mentioned this and WebLogic because this happened a couple months ago. So what's new? Well, what's new is, is that there's still over 100,000 websites out there still susceptible to this exploit, and they're now using crypto jacking uh, attacks against it to mine and profit from it. And while this is not so crazy as the, uh, the web logic exploit, this is precisely the same type of attack. In the security world, we call these things remote code executions. And the whole idea here is, is that the attacker is able to run his code on your server. This is precisely what unikernels prevent. So we know that, you know, upgrading from version to version uh, on particular pieces of software and keeping up to all the CVEs that come out day after day after day, that's hard. That's tough for a lot of teams to manage. Um, but what if you could start with a more secure substrate for your software to sit on? And we could completely prevent these types of attacks from running. That's the promise of unikernels.